Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I want to speak about the persistence of my spindle on the Proxon and how bad it is actually. Just the spindle, so if I just turn on the machine on the slow speed, you can see that the indicator is moving in the range even more than 100. It's only on the spindle. And if I will use the uh, collets, the collets I'm using, and uh, try to measure the same, they are all quite a poor quality. And I decided to change it. I bought a new collet and a new spindle. The assembly will be a little bit different compared to what I have uh, now. So this uh, persistent spindle. Persistence shaft, or at least the uh, manufacturer says that there is persistence of uh, 0.003 millimeters. I don't know, I, I'm not really trusted, but maybe. Uh, this spindle is a little bit different, the shaft is uh, uh, 10 millimeters. Uh, currently, I'm using 8 millimeter shaft, so I will replace the bearings, I will replace the shaft and also, as the original one spindle had 10 millimeter shaft, I have this spacer that sets from this original spindle that sets uh, between the bearings, so I could use it as well. And the assembly should be a little bit more accurate. Before I disassemble everything, I want to check the current right now and to, to at least have the comparison uh, with the new solution. Currently there is almost 500 of the millimeter of the run out on the mill that I'm regularly using. But let's give it a try with uh, the new collet I have, the same spindle, but a new collet. The quality is looks very nice. It's in the foil, so I will need to remove this foil first, of course. It looks quite nice. Let's check it. Now I have a much better result with the new code uh, than it was initially with my old one, but still it's not the best. So the runout is uh, still near something like between 1 and 200, so like one half hundred. Uh, exactly the runout I have on the spindle itself. So I need to give it a try to this one, new one spindle. Let's install it. The spindle and the nut already looks much better than my original one. They made really, really nice. I will need to disassemble all the head, remove the spindle, remove the bearings, install the new one, uh, cut it because it will be longer than I need. Uh, also, I will need to cut a little bit one of the wheels because I have uh, um, eight millimeter hole there and I will need 10 millimeter hole but it's not a big problem uh, and let's let's give it a try how it will work
Now I have both the bearings removed. And basically what I could do next is just directly install the new bearings, the bigger one. And the setup on the shaft will be two bearings, the pipe and the shaft inside. Um, this assembly is going just directly into the spindle. And then the shaft goes from the bottom. Now I will cut this spindle a little bit to this size that I could put it in exactly in the place where the old one was. Yeah, I was uh, able to order basically a 100 millimeter spindle, but uh, 100 could be just a little bit not enough. So I want to go with uh, 150. And that's, that's the sizes I will need. So now it has quite a nice finishing and it's ready to be installed into the machine. Installation should be pretty simple. I'm just pushing from the bottom uh, this shaft. And that's only one thing I basically need to do. But not only the one. So now shaft is just trying to go down. It stays pretty nice so there is no plane nothing but i need to fix it so previously i for fixing it i was fixed in this bearing in the top bearing and i was use this ring this ring is uh, eight millimeters so i will need a new one anyway but also i need to push the spindle on the bottom bearing so not on this one so i will make some longer shaft over here or pipe with which i will fix the spindle inside I want to have the persistent hole inside, so like uh, ten, one tenth on the plus, so I will use my inner cutter, small inner cutter for that. Now this piece is done and on this one also I made uh, these two cuttings for actually fixing this nut or pipe or whatever and the wheel later on. So I had quite the same thing on my previous shaft over here. This one I was made with uh, exactly the props on. Mini mill. This one I was just cut with the polishing machine. So let's give it a try one more time. Okay, this should be good. The installation. I'm doing everything completely wrong, so I'm pressing down the spindle with one through three block and then I'm pressing just with my fingers 
uh, this fixing nut and screwing down the screw. Now it should be okay. Should be without a measure play and should be accurate enough. Now let's check run out. So the new nut and new code. My old end mill on a new spindle. Now I have run out in the range of uh, 100. I'm not sure that I will make it better or it's even possible to do it better on this small machine because the bearings uh, that I use there is quite small and already on the bearings it becomes a problem. So the shaft itself quite accurate, the uh, collet as well, but bearings is not so. So that's my result. I'm satisfied and now just assembly and let's try how it works. Now I will increase the inner diameter in the bigger pulley. Pretty easy to do if you have the lace and the small cutter. Okay, this one is zero. This will be one millimeter. Let's check what where I am now. So. At the moment, it's exactly nine millimeters. So. Should be quite a good. Half more. Now I have all the pieces of the puzzle ready and just assembly back. Test one more time, and as you can see now, when everything assembled, I have the run out in less than uh, 100. I'm sure that it will be not possible to make it better with this machine and these bearings, so I'm satisfied with the result. I will try not to overload machine too much this time, and I will do just a 4 mm cut in the 70-75 aluminium. What I could say, it's extremely clean cut and uh, it cuts much, much better than it was before. So this update was definitely good. That will be it with this video and see you next time. Take care.